Hi, I'm Donna Collins. This is a workshop video four, and in this video, I'm going to cover workshop electrics. So what I've got is I've got uh, I've got several double plug sockets all the way around the shop on its own separate ring main, wired into the uh, fuse box on a 32 amp circuit. That's more than sufficient for most of the tools. Nothing's more than 2,200 watts. You never have more than two things running at any one time. 32 amps is fine, and everything obviously everything's on a 13 amp socket bar and one machine. But we'll go back to that in a bit. So. What I originally did is when I was um, deciding on the workshop layout, I had all the machinery in various places. I was using extension leads. Now, that's not the best idea because there's wires all over the floor and it's a big trip hazard. So I tried to get the electrics in as soon as I possibly could. And it's quite simply a case of running a double plug socket down to wherever I had a machine. So um, there are occasions when I've, uh, I've added an extra socket and I've spurred in. This is where I have kind of like my charging station. All of my uh, cordless power tools are all Ryobi. Screw fix do a deal, still do I believe every now and again where instead of 150 or 200 pound they kind of do it on a 50% off offer and you get a drill and an item like say a drill and a jigsaw for 99 pound or a drill and a service off for 99 pound. I've taken up three of their offers um, and as a result I've ended up with three charges, six batteries, uh, three drills, a jigsaw, you get the idea. Um, the only problem with that is the nickel cadmium batteries as opposed to lithium ion. Lithium ion is lighter, uh, it holds its charge better. The nickel cadmium ones tend to uh, decharge themselves if left alone, especially in a cold environment. And obviously this plug socket is wired into the ring main, so when the workshop's isolated, these are off. Not much of a problem because I've got six of them, so it only takes about five or ten minutes for me to get sufficient charge, then use a battery, come back, and the next one's got enough charge. Had I, um, had I only got a couple of batteries, that would be a bit of an issue when I would maybe want to change this plug socket. Um, so it was live all the time, like uh, the dust extractor socket on the other side of the, um, the room. So, one of the other sockets we've got, I've got one up high, which is above my layout table, on the, um, above the table saw and the outfeed table. Uh, relatively recently, um, I've started acquiring Festool gear. The best thing about Festool, the reasonable tools, pretty good tools, high quality tools. Um, not as good as they should be for the money in some cases, but the best part of it for me is their um, wiring system. They all come with this little plug it cable. So you've got one cable for all the tools and the lead is really long, it's about four or five meters long, something like that. So I plug it into the top, the other plugs are my table saw, so I don't have any wires running around the floor going to my table saw and I've got that's long enough to be able to get pretty much anywhere to the workshop for more of a festival tool I've got. Up here I've got an air filtration system which is a jet. Um, they've changed the design in the last couple of years. I managed to get one of the, uh, the previous design which has got a remote control and a timer. Really wanted to get that one because the new one doesn't have that feature and uh, it's just the same price so it seemed to make sense to try and get the old one which was better value for money. I've got one single plug socket up there that one is always live, so that means I can leave the air filtration unit running for a couple of hours or after I've isolated all the other machinery so I can take all of the dust out of the atmosphere in the workshop. So I said before that everything's on a 13 amp uh, plug socket with the exception of one machine, and this is the machine. It's my standard station. Now, this is quite an old machine, it was a second hand purchase off eBay. It didn't cost a lot actually, it cost about £80, but it wasn't complete. The dust extraction, parts of that one, but it didn't really have any, uh, it didn't have a base. And when I brought it over and started plugging it in, it was uh, blowing a 13 amp fuse all the time. It did actually come with a 13 amp fuse on it, so the guy before me uh, had obviously used it without much of a problem, but I just couldn't get it to work in my shop. Every time I turned it on, it blew the 13 amp fuse. So, uh, a point of note when I was doing the electrics, obviously I live in Scotland. In England you've got Part P. In Scotland there is no Part P. Now the regulations in Scotland say that electrics have got to be done by a competent person. The difference between England and Scotland, as far as I can tell, is that England... Uh, the same applies with Part P, only Part P specifies what a competent person is, person is, and we don't really have that in Scotland. So I found the regulations in Scotland pretty wishy-washy, to be honest. Um, I got three quotes from three different electricians who came out, uh, and I asked them what the score with it was. And um, some of them were happy for me just to like run all the wiring through and just connect it up. Some said it wasn't allowed at all. I rang building regulations and uh, they give me a really vague answer. So at the end of the day I came up, um, I contacted the Sparky Direct, told him what I was doing, he came out and he had a look. He was happy if I ran all the cabling, I mounted all the boxes to the wall, I left all the wires hanging out, he coupled everything up and he did the final connection. So 
and I got a safety certificate from him. So I'm kind of covered in all aspects. It's as far as I understand in England that you're completely allowed to do that, but a lot of electricians obviously won't let you do that because you take money out of their pocket. Some will even go as far as saying that it's not allowed. There's a big debate. I'm not an electrician. I'm not up on the regs. All I know is when I got people to come up and give me quotes, I got three different answers. Something else I got different answers on was because this machine kept blowing 13 amp supplies, obviously I needed to go to a 16 amp supply. I've seen guys in the forum, and you get this quite a bit with table saws, once you get to over 2,000 watts, 2,200, 2,500 watts, you really need a 16 amp supply. And what a lot of the guys do is you can buy 16 amp plugs and sockets. Now you can buy them in Axman's, you can buy them in Rutland's. However, the electrician that came up to me, he said, he, he told me that you weren't allowed to use them in a domestic environment and it's something to do with shielding and that the pins don't have adequate shielding to use in a domestic environment. The next sparky that came out said he didn't know anything about that and the third sparky that came out said that uh, that's only in the habitable areas and because it's a workshop and it's not a habitable area that wouldn't be an issue. So ultimately, because I wasn't going to put this unit on casters anyway, I decided to avoid all of the ambiguity and, and you know um, any misunderstanding with the regulations with regards to putting a plug socket in and I just got it hardwired in. I'd already bought the gear, this is like a 16 amp uh, isolating switch that I bought from Axminster. So I ran the cable into it and when the Sparky came in he wired it in. So it's another good reason why this machine's actually not on casters. It's hardwired into this wall. I've got a 16 amp dedicated circuit breaker on the unit up here, which is the first one here, and it's also on an isolation switch here, which obviously is always off. And then I've got the no volt release really switch on the machine as well. Um, quite a few people on forums have had problems where they've had to like put 16 amp supplies in. What I would say is at the end of the day, if you've got a safety certificate from an electrician to say that it's safe, then you're fairly cast iron and covered. Um, it's worth asking a spark, you can get his advice out before you commit to either putting a plug socket in or putting a 16 amp socket in. Ask them if they're happy, ask them if it's allowed. If they say yes and they issue the certificate, you should be pretty much covered. So, that about rounded up for Workshop Electrics. So, next video is going to be dust extraction and I'll speak to you about that in a bit.